Hey, what's up everybody? It's Bally at Bran. So in this video, what I'm going to be doing is testing out the audio and then also just going over any questions, right? That people might have um, when it comes to scaling and answering questions one by one, it just, it just doesn't scale. So what I'm going to do is scroll down a little bit here and we're just going to answer some questions that I was trying to last night, but the mic itself was having some problems. Remember, God will could actually be female. Good one. Good one. <laughs> yeah, could be totally. But what are the odds of that? I would I would put some serious money, serious money that the God will is not a female, but whatever. Who cares? Shoulda, coulda, woulda. Uh, Shirley Fortress. I do appreciate this person. Um, you know, it's something that I've struggled with before growing up a lot and had gotten down to my prime weight. And then uh, ever since getting back into Hex and kind of just, you know, working a lot of hours, um, this is something I need to get back into and, you know, continue eating healthier on a consistent basis. Uh, before my stream itself, I'm going to be lifting some weights and got some aminos in my drink over here uh, that going to be focusing on the diet more because that is important. And I do appreciate this person reaching out. So Shirley Fortress, thank you. Let me give that a like. Uh, let's see. Uh, Vogel says, we would be lost without your short clips. There are so many live streams that there's not enough time in the day to get through them. Believe me, I know. Uh, thanks a million for keeping me updated without taking me over. You're welcome. Bet you laughed out loud for that one. Uh, eh, not really laughed out loud, but I thought it was cool. Uh, Barry Crump says, great show. Thank you, Brand, for all your fantastic posts. God bless the God will. And I'll just say glad you enjoyed it. Uh, once again, this is these are things I used to respond to every single comment, but I just can't, right? It's just something that, uh, you know, doesn't really scale. So I'm going to start doing this and just uh, taking a look, okay? So this was actually the question that I had wanted to answer last night, but I couldn't because the audio itself was having some issues. So John Anderson, he says, let me make sure I'm not too close to the mic. He says, I own Hex and I'm all in, just not sure what you mean when Hex can get to the same price as Bitcoin, when Bitcoin has under 19 million coins, being a mind towards that. Uh, let's see, while Hex is over 500 billion and being minted higher at a rate of 3.69% inflation, do you mean same value or same price? So. That's a really good question, John. Um, yeah, once again, great question. And what I mean is actually the uh, higher value and higher price. Someone else had asked that question, but I just I just don't see it here. It used to be, oh yeah, right here, Paul G. Brandon, how can Hex be like Bitcoin when Hex has more coins about? So I wanna answer this very thoroughly, right? Uh, a lot of people, they, they look at just the one metric. They look at just the supply. And these are the same people that looked at Hex in the beginning and they said, there's no way that Hex can go to a penny or to a dollar. Look at its supply. That means the market cap would be X, Y, and Z. But the thing that they're failing to realize and the thing that I want people to focus on is not just that one variable, right? Because just like the market cap, the supply is a vanity metric. Um, what, what is the important metric is what's the actual liquidity pool? You know, because with Hex, yeah, we've got like 566 billion, something like that. Uh, a lot of coins. I don't know the exact amount. For this example, let's just say 566 billion. For, uh, for Satoshi and for Bitcoin, Satoshi has 1 million Bitcoin, right? And we know that the origin address and kind of like the sub, like the sister addresses, own roughly like 94, 95% of total, of total Hex. So when you look at that supply and you ask yourself, hey, did, uh, you know, did Satoshi's coins, did they ever sell on the market? Did they ever dump on the market? The answer is no. If they ever did, the price would go down significantly. And same thing with the origin address. So whoever the origin address is, whatever it is, it's a trust, an entity, a person, a group, an organization, et cetera. Um, what I'm trying to say is for the adoption amplifier, the 351 day launch phase, they got about a million Ethereum. And so if they were ever to say need to take some profit or need to get some capital from the, the raise, 
the fundraise, right? Why would you ever sell the hex? You know, because sure, they've got 95% of the supply of hex, right? But just like with Satoshi, why would Satoshi be selling those million Bitcoin? Why would you be, you know, shooting yourself in the foot, you know, with, with the project that you created? And in this case, with Hex, the product that you created. So I just want to pound that into people's heads once again is because the supply itself is really irrelevant. And this is why market cap is such a vanity metric. But people are going to be saying the same thing with Pulse Chain, where its supply is going to be in the absolute trillions. And we're going to see the same thing where it's like, oh, Pulse is in the in you know X amount of trillion supply. There's no way it could ever get to a penny. And I just want to encourage people to look into more of the finer variables and the finer details. It's not just the supply. That would matter if everything was decentralized, right? And if we had an entity that was malicious and that was selling on our heads. But since we have an entity that has only ever shown benevolency, right? Has only ever shown us that they're benevolent, whoever they are, whatever they are, then we know, okay, I mean, I'm not going to consider that 95% of supply uh, in Hex or in Pulse Chain, right? Because Pulse Chain is very centrally um, owned as well. Uh, I'm not going to consider that supply, you know, negative sell pressure or something that could affect the price uh, until they actually put it into the liquidity pools and start, you know, trading against the price in the market itself. So uh, let's just see if there's any more questions once again. I might make some se separate clips from this to answer the question separately, but we'll see. I mean, any more of the time is really limited. And like the other person said, I need to start focusing more on, uh, on my health instead of, you know, answering a million questions a day and, and, you know, not having my priorities. Right. So we'll, uh, we'll like those guys questions. <sighs> Let's see. Uh, bit finesse. So it says wildly understated comment. Actually, no shit. I'm in Cleveland tonight about to pull, out of the tank wash and cars pull up with, fl uh, with flash. Oh my God, this is, dude, this is long. I'm not going to read this whole thing, dude, but he has a thousand lumen flashlight. That's pretty good. I've got like a three or 4,000. That thing is really cool. Really bright. It's yeah. Anyways, uh, uh Nico, Nico says, uh, just a big fucking black hole that what crypto is up and down and emotional torture yeah i mean it's only you know that way if you kind of let it be that way if you're in good assets like uh like hex pulse chain things like this sure you're always going to have that up and down roller coaster wave of not only emotions but a price right which can affect the emotions but um it's so much easier said than done to not let the candlesticks and the price uh to not let it affect your emotions but you almost become like desensitized to it. And I think being a hex staker has really helped out with that because once again, when you're staking, you're, sa you're saving yourself from yourself and you're, you know, you're putting those coins out in the future, you're burning them and you're getting shares right now, but you're delaying that gratification for the future, which is once again, uh, preventing you from selling during those dips, unless you want an emergency end stake. But even if you do emergency end stake, you're going to be significantly penalized and sometimes completely nuked. So it's uh, it's one of those things that I mentioned. It's it's easier said than done. I know Hexologist has said recently that if if Hex didn't have the staking mechanism, he might have sold all of his coins a long time ago. And I'll be honest, same thing, right? When you you know uh, when you see that milestone of okay six digits, right, hundred thousand dollars. Oh my God, this is awesome. The net worth hundred thousand. And then, you know, the next goal is for me, at least is like quarter of a million, right? So 250,000. And then it's like, bam, target hit. And then it's like, oh, cool. 25% of the way there. And then half a million and then 50% of the way there. Right. And then three quarters and then a million. And then once you hit the million, it's like, whoa, you know, everyone's big psychological number that they think that they want to retire, even though it's like more money that you would need. A million is not actually a lot. But then once you achieve that milestone, it's like, man, you know, this is really kind of like monopoly, you know, and it really is one of those things that if you let assets work for you, uh, like hacks when you're sleeping and have things that are a store of value, that you can just see numbers that you never thought even possible. And then there's a, there's certain psychological barriers that I mentioned. Once you pass the million and, you know, if you ever get to the eight figure, 
uh, say like the 10 million or over 10 million net worth. It's, uh, it's one of those things you start to ponder where it's like, okay, you know, the money problem is solved. Now, what am I going to do? Am I going to sit on my thumb all day or am I going to, you know, try and make the world a better place and give back and build something, right? Richard talks about the meaning of life that I just posted and shout out to Motley because he's the one that I discovered that video from. And, uh, you know, once again, once you've had your pleasures, once you've had your, uh, your, your wants, your desires, your needs, uh, fulfilled, then, then it's like, okay, the bigger picture is solving the meat problem that Richard talks about. So I do thank the person that, uh, has encouraged me to, you know, get back into shape and, and start losing some weight again. So, uh, I really do appreciate that. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Everyone. Once again, these are just some questions from the audience. Uh, I don't really see, okay, am I going to London? No, um, the travel restrictions are just gonna be too much for me. I don't wanna take, an, I don't wanna take one of those you know, tests, whether it be negative or positive, just don't want to do anything with that. So I'm not going, but um, you know, hopefully, hopefully some of that travel stuff uh, screws off sometime in the future and that we can all kind of get back to some sort of normalcy without such uh, you know, blatant restrictions. So this is the answer he is going to give in the Lex Friedman podcast when he asks him what the meaning of life is. I mean, I don't see why Richard wouldn't have something similarly said. Uh, Richard's got a very uh, articulate way of saying things and you know, the analogy with the bread. Yeah, it's absolutely great. But that's all I have for this video, guys. Uh, just once again, answering some of the comment questions. So if you all ever have any questions, I'll try and answer them here as opposed to responding one-to-one. -one. Once again, I just need to be better about the uh, efficiency of my time. You know, no one's paying me to do this. I'm doing this all for educating others. And so uh, I do thank the person that has, you know, wanted me to get the priorities right and, you know, stay healthy, get healthy if you're not healthy, exercise, lift weights, things like that. So speaking of which, I've got some, uh, some weights to lift and a little bit of cardio before the actual stream today. So thanks everyone. And I'll see everyone at two o'clock.